Carl Sagan because he tells the story of the universe and the story of exploring. Exploring has two parts. There's the going and then there's the telling and you have to have both. Uh, we often come back to Shackleton because of the uh, efforts uh, to keep his crew alive. Ferdinand Magellan. I think my favorite explorer was Magellan. Uh, so I have to go with him. He said the sea is dangerous and it storms terrible, but these obstacles have never been sufficient reason to remain ashore. He led the expedition to be the first crew to uh, circumnavigate our planet, almost like you could call it the first orbit. Uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. I'm not sure if that just makes me old or, or what. I love the Gravity movie. I know a lot of laws of physics were violated, but that's really not the point. It brings people to space. There's no question there. It's the right stuff. I'm a test pilot, so it's pretty much an unwritten law for us that that has to be your favorite space movie. The favorite song I heard in space was one my family sent me, Happy Together by the Turtles, I think was probably the best of the songs I know from space. Major Tom, I haven't uh, listened to the lyrics all the way through and my guess is it doesn't end well. But... And I may never listen to uh, Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here again the same way because on one mission we basically kept that running continuously for days on end. Earth atmosphere, I can't get the right name of the title, but it's basically the uh, dynamics, fluid dynamics of the Earth's atmosphere. And looking at that from space, I thought was actually very uh, useful for me to better understand what I was seeing below and how it all, it all made sense at some level. The most useful MIT class ever has to be unified. Uh, Doc Batten's course, he was a living legend and every astrodynamicist knew about his textbook, the Batten Bible. Uh, he, he didn't teach much astro though, it was more about the beauty of math. This guy, this living legend, figured out how to get to the moon with a wristwatch and he forced you to look for elegant solutions and not just brute force with computer iteration. It was uh, one of my favorite classes because he forced me to think in ways that I didn't know I could. My first class was 801 and uh, that, that's pretty useful in space, plus it allows me to taught me how to calculate how much younger I am now uh, than I would have been uh, if I wouldn't have flown. My favorite hangout spot when I was a student at MIT was uh, tooling with my friends on uh, Third West, you know, studying really hard, getting ready for the exams, and, and going through the problem sets. That was actually a lot of fun. I miss it. Well, I used to run some morning workouts with the Air Force ROTC cadets at the indoor track, so I spent quite a bit of time there. Uh, there were some really sharp kids uh, in that crowd, and I, I really liked working with them. Any place along the Charles. There's, there's so much that goes on in classes and homework and sports and trying to balance all those things that a run along the river fixed most of that for me. Well, <laughs> it has to do with that little liberal arts college down the road. And when I was a freshman and we rode crew, we were a very, very fast team. And when we went down to the boathouse down the river, at that school down the river, the women from that school were looking at the results and they said, oh, MIT beat us. That's terrible. And then another one of those women said, you know, but they have low verbals. So the rest of that year, our van had a sign on it that said, MIT women's crew, low verbals, but we are very fast. Dramatic pause. Uh, let me skip that one, probably, uh, probably not appropriate. I, I, the funniest memory from MIT actually happened on orbit on uh, STS-126 when uh, came to the realization that there were four MIT graduates on orbit at the same time. We had uh, Greg Chamatoff, Mike Fink, and Heidi Stephanie and Fipe are, uh, as well as myself on orbit, and that was uh, kind of kind of exciting, kind of funny, and uh, actually kind of cool, I guess, in the long run.
Oh, I really like the spacesuit a lot more. Uh, I tell people when, it, when you're wearing an EMU in orbit to do a spacewalk, it's uh, like working in, uh, like working my pajamas, air conditioning pajamas. Tim is is wicked cool, uh, but I'm going to give the slight edge to the spacesuit because if nothing else, you can't beat the view. To get to space, I would actually wear anything. How about Tim the Beaver's costume in space? I had a lot of challenging experiments, but uh, I think the toughest ones for, for me were, were the ones that had uh, human biological products, all the way from blood, saliva, and uh, you can imagine the rest. It was every experiment. I mean, every experiment is important to someone, and every experiment is probably going to give results that just can't happen down here on Earth. My wedding ring. I think if you were going to Mars, it'd be a long trip, uh, so you're gonna need to take the family. Oh, on a Mars mission, I'd definitely take a picture of my family, uh, probably more than anything else. And I've got a picture of my wife and I took from one of those uh, dollar photo things back in 1986 uh, that I've had with me for a while, as you can tell, and that's gone to orbit with me every time. If I could take my whole family to space, there's really not much reason to ever come home. Hundred years, uh, that sounds like a long time. Aero Astro Department's a hundred years old, right? That's why we're making this video. So uh, my guess is, uh, my guess is the, I'm gonna go with the whole solar system. We are gonna go back to the moon. We're gonna go visit Mars and actually establish the colonies on both moon and Mars. And we're going to start really using the resources of the asteroids out there so that we don't have to hurt beautiful planet Earth. How hard it was to come home. I would have stayed another six months in a minute. And when I came back, there's, there's actually a certain grief. How much fun uh, just floating around uh, really is. The thing you're never ready for is to look out the window. That, you know, the first, second, 400th time you look out the window, it is absolutely unbelievable. Sometimes your job is not to do everything you were trained for, but to come back to Earth and tell the stories. It was absolutely amazing. The most startling thing was on one of my first EVAs was seeing a shooting star below me as it entered the atmosphere. There's no way to pick one. Uh, of course, the yeah, it would be a long list, um, but every time uh, you put your nose to the glass of the window to look down at Earth, it's beautiful. Day and night, good weather, bad weather, um, just, just every single time, it was amazing. It allowed me to feel really present, and my most favorite memory is probably seeing Massachusetts and Cape Cod, that very, very distinct geography, and I'd see it in the distance, and then I'd feel like I was there, and my family lives in Massachusetts, and it was really important to me to feel like I was right there with them. And, and then it would be going away, which made me feel wistful, and at the same time I knew I'd be back, just 90 minutes.